A Lamar Consolidated ISD teacher charged with indecency with a child. Now they are off the job. We're talking to the district about what's being done to protect students. A terrifying attack in Memorial Park. A jogger is raped and her money is stolen. The suspect may have done this before. Now investigators need your help bringing him to justice. A Klein Collins high school teacher accused of using racial slurs in the classroom. We have new reaction from the school district. I know that I needed to make this decision to make myself happy. And call it the great resignation. People are quitting their jobs without another one being lined up. We break down the reasons workers are headed for the door. And right now at 6 o'clock, a kindergarten teacher, as we said, arrested and accused of inappropriate interactions with a student at Lamar Consolidated ISD. ABC 13 reporter Roxy Bustamante is working this story. She joins us live from Tamarin Elementary School in that district. Roxy? Yeah, here today there were officers and additional counselors and support staff to talk to students and their families. Now, I also confirmed with a spokesperson with the district that they believe this incident is isolated just to Tamron Elementary School. We are really worried. We actually we were talking about what we're going to do, what we're going to say to our kids. Parents shocked and concerned after learning a kindergarten teacher, Troy Moore, was arrested on Tuesday and charged with indecency with a child. According to Lamar Consolidated ISD, the district received a report on Monday accusing Moore of having an inappropriate interaction with a student at Tamaron Elementary School. We cannot have those, that type of people inside the school, so we have to investigate. Moore started working for the district in August of 2020, and according to the district, Moore passed the required criminal history investigation, and the district claims it was not aware of reported misconduct before October 11th. Fort Bend ISD confirmed Moore previously worked with their district, and he voluntarily resigned from his position during the 2019-2020 school year. I've met Mr. Moore. He's very nice. <laughs> he's very good with the kids. I've never... I have another one that comes here and she thinks he's the coolest teacher. <laughs> so this, it's very shocking. We need to talk with our, with our kids, you know, a lot about everything and just uh, make sure they have a good conversation, a good communication and be confident, you know, and trust in your kids. Roxy Bustamante, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Houston police need the public's help to find a man behind a brutal attack in Memorial Park. It all happened just a couple of weeks ago. Two hours ago, however, investigators released photos of that man now wanted for raping and, and uh, robbing that jogger. There is the picture there, and there is his face. Our Steve Campion has much more on what they are saying about this attacker. What's concerning, investigators say this man, this now wanted rapist, knew the trails here at Memorial Park well. They fear this isn't his first time. We're told the man went after that woman as she was jogging late at night. Around 1130 in the evening on Wednesday, September 29th, HPD investigators say this man overpowered a 32 year old woman along a Memorial Park trail. We're told he held a sharp object against her neck, threatened her with a gun and ordered her into this white four door sedan where he sexually assaulted her. Investigators say he then drove her to a gas station where he demanded money from the ATM before he dropped her off at the Eastern Glades restrooms. Joggers we caught up with today said they hadn't heard about the brutal crime. They're now rethinking their safety at one of Houston's most beloved parks. I like to come on my own because I can come in my own time, but then when I do come on my own, I'm always looking behind me and in the bushes because there are not that many people walking and I always look behind me to see if somebody's coming. I'm kind of worried about that. It was just, I'll be more, more aware right now what's going on in here at this park. Yeah. You know what? Reporting, by the way, there is plenty of anger on to another story here over low bonds in Houston. A march for justice was all part of that anger this morning. Family members of Martha Medina say she was killed by a suspect who was out of jail on bond. Martha's family says her death would have never happened 
if a Harris County judge had not released that suspect on bond. She was killed outside of a McDonald's in East Harris County last month. The suspect, Andrew Williams, now this is what is upsetting people, was out on bond in connection with a previous capital murder charge in 2019 and also out on bond for an aggravated assault the same time uh, of that same year. The family in Fiel, Houston, now asking to overhaul the bail reform movement. I wish we didn't have to meet under these circumstances, but now that we are, we must find justice in these bad situations so that changes can come, so that no other family has to suffer the, amount, the unamountable pain that these families have suffered. Organizers say that bail reform was intended to keep low-income minor offenders out of jail, but they say the movement has turned into a revolving door for violent offenders, something marchers say must stop. Well, believe it or not, we are closely watching the remnants of a storm out in the Pacific because it is headed our way tomorrow. ABC 13 Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog is timing this all out for us. Travis, we want to know what we can expect, but I think most of us thought we were past the worst of this season. Well, it's from the Pacific side. This can happen in October where the jet stream winds recurve a storm, moves it across Mexico, and then the moisture slides across Texas. We're not talking about a big wind maker, but it will be a rain maker, and especially for the hill country. But it now looks like some of that rain is going to be aimed a little bit more towards Houston. We've increased the rain chance tomorrow to 60%, mostly dry for that morning drive. But as we head towards the noon hour into the early afternoon, a 60 percent chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here's what it looks like on satellite and radar. That was the last center fix from the National Hurricane Center. Now a depression as it's gotten shredded up by the mountains of Mexico, but already a lot of moisture is moving into Texas well ahead of the main circulation, and there will be a mid-level circulation that survives, and it looks like a lot of that lift is moving towards southeast Texas. Another reason why we've increased that rain chance for tomorrow. Tonight, the greatest risk of flash flooding will be over the Texas Hill Country up to the I-35 corridor from San Antonio into Dallas and tomorrow the flood risk shifts into southeast Texas with the greatest risk for some street flooding off to the northwest of downtown Houston. So be keeping a careful eye on the radar. Then after that we are looking forward to this. A major fall front. The coldest front we've had since late April reaches us on Friday. We'll time out the rains for you and the arrival of that front that gives way to a glorious weekend forecast coming up. All right, love to hear that. Well, today was the annual State of the City Address, and Mayor Sylvester Turner used his time to highlight the city's resilience. Turner says this year's theme, We Always Rise, lays out a vision that embodies the city's spirit of dreaming big. The mayor said during the past year, the city faced the deadly winter storm, along with COVID, and a rise in homicides and domestic violence. Turner also discussed the city's preparations for another Hurricane Harvey-type event. Well, tomorrow we'll hear from Fort Bend County Judge K.P. George for the annual State of the Fort Bend County Address. That starts at 1130 tomorrow morning. Now, officials will highlight the economic recovery in Fort Bend and the resource programs unveiled to help those hit hardest by the pandemic. All this month, we continue celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. All across Houston, many other businesses are doing the same, including a local McDonald's franchise. We love the look of this McDonald's. It is absolutely spectacular. They are show showcasing a local artist's work. ABC 13 reporter TJ Parker sharing the story behind this incredible art. Well, it's not your typical stop at your local McDonald's. Local artist Gonzo247 brought this restaurant to life in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. There's a lot of twists and turns and kind of this, this fluidity because I feel like that's the way life is. Gonzo 247's latest work can be seen on your next Big Mac trip on the side of this McDonald's on the Gulf Freeway near Wayside. It's one of only three stores across the country to be a part of the Ritmo y Calor project to celebrate the month. My aunt was in the drive through lane and was talking to somebody and she was like, whoa, this is really cool. Like, I love, I love what's going on here. Like, who's the artist? And they sell Gonzo 247. They're like, that's my nephew! Gonzo's family emigrated from Mexico, so for him, this mural is personal. You do it for the love of your family. You do it for the love of, you know, the hopes of, of having a better life or, or just kind of creating something new. Franchise owner Maricel Quijano was thrilled to have the artwork shown on her store for the project. Immediately I had his name in my head. Um, Gonzo is the best in the city. 
and you can't go anywhere without seeing his art. McDonald's project is part of a bigger virtual concert happening this weekend to celebrate Houston's Hispanic culture and Hispanic Heritage Month. Maricel plans on keeping the artwork up for as long as possible. The colors, the vibrancy, um, the flower, the flow, um, it's just stunning. It's stunning. I love it. TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Yeah.